This is the unit circle. The unit circle is a circle whose radius is one unit. And the circle will be centered at the origin. So even though you don't see a coordinate plane attached to this particular uh, circle, I want you to know that this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis, with the center being at the origin. Now, the first thing that we want to learn about the unit circle is where our special angles are at. And all the special angles on this particular unit circle have lines coming from them. Now, we always start at something called initial position. Initial position is the ray coming from the center of the circle going off in the positive x-axis. We say that that is zero degrees or zero radians. And then all positive angles are counterclockwise from there. So if you go in the counterclockwise direction, let's go back, clock wise, that's a very long word, that is the positive angle measurements. If you go clockwise, those are going to be our negative angle measurements. I know it can be confusing when you think about the direction of a clock, but that's the way it works. Our special angles are here and we're going to talk about them in both degrees and radians. If I go counterclockwise, the first special angle you come across is 30 degrees. The next one is 45 degrees. Oops, sorry. And the next one is 60. And then when you get up to here, you're at 90 degrees, which makes sense because you've just made a right angle. Then I'm at 120, 135, 150, and then this is at 180. Because remember from geometry that 180 degree angles are just straight lines. So if you start from the initial position and go off in the other direction, that's a straight line. Then you're at uh, 210, 225, 240, and then 270, 300. 315, 330, and then when you've gone a complete circle, you're back at 360 degrees. What I want you to notice is that these angles here are all multiples of 30. So it's your 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, 360. The ones that are in between that we haven't talked about yet, those are our multiples of 45. So you start here at 0, and then you're at 45. Sorry. And then another 45 is 90, and then another 45 is 135, and then another 45 is 180, and then another 45 is 225, 270. 315, and then th back to 360. Now let's talk about those angles in terms of radians. So in radians, 0 degrees is 0 radians. 30 degrees, however, is pi over 6. We learned how to turn degrees into radians by multiplying the degrees by pi over 180. So you get 30 pi over 180, which reduces to pi over 6. 45 degrees is pi over 4. 60 degrees is pi over 3. 90 degrees is pi over 2. And then you're at 2 pi over 3. 3 pi over 4. 5 pi over 6, and then 1 pi.
So if you think about it, 90 degrees, which is pi over 2, that's a half a pi, because 180 is a whole pi. I'm going to give you another way of looking at this unit circle in terms of radians. Radians are the angle measurements that we must memorize because calculus is only done in radian measure. Let's start by talking about our multiples of 30. We always start here at 0. Remember, this is our initial position. So if I go counterclockwise, the first angle is going to be 1 pi over 6. Another 30 degrees would be 2 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 3. The next one will be 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. And then 4 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6, which doesn't reduce. 6 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6. 9 pi over 6. 10 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. And then you're back at 12 pi over over 6, which is 2 pi, which is the same thing as 360 degrees. So if you can't remember all the radian measures of the multiples of 30 around the unit circle, this is an easier way of going about doing it, because all you have to do is reduce the fractions. Now let's talk about the multiples of 45. We're going to start here at 0 radians. And the first one's going to be pi over 4. 45 degrees is every pi over 4. So the next one is 2 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4. 6 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4. And 8 pi over over 4. And remember that for the clockwise direction, all you do is make everything negative. So if you're going the other direction, and you start here at 0, then this would be negative pi over 4, and then negative pi over 2 negative 3 pi over 4, negative pi, negative 5 pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 7 pi over 4, and then back to negative 2 pi. So all you do is make everything negative going the other direction, and it works exactly the same way. Next, we're going to determine the terminal points on the unit circle. The ordered pair where the terminal ray hits the unit circle, these are very special points. And in order to do it, we're going to go back over a geometry concept. I want to find the point where the angle pi over 6, or 30 degrees, hits the unit circle. Well, if I draw a line, let's try that a little straighter, if I draw a line down to the x-axis. I get this nice little right angle. And this is my angle, 30 degrees, or pi over 6. Well, if that's 30 degrees, and this is 90 degrees over here, then this must be 60. And in geometry, when we studied 30, 60, 90 triangles, we found out that their side lengths were x across from 30 degrees, x the square root of 3 across from 60, and 2x is across from the right angle. But in the unit circle, x is 1. So really, this is just 1, the square root of 3, and 2. In the ordered pair where the point hits the unit circle, the first value in the ordered pair is always the cosine of x and the second value is always the sine of x. 
Well, what was the definition of cosine? Cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse. So for the uh, 30 degree angle, or pi over 6, opposite over hypotenuse of this angle, I'm sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse, is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of x is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be 1 half. So the ordered pair where the graph or where the uh, terminal ray hits the unit circle is at radical 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Let's do this again now for the 45 degree angle or pi over 4. If I want to find the point where this angle hits the unit circle, in geometry we found out that a 45, 45, 90 triangle had the side lengths x, x, x the square root of 2. But if x is 1, then this is just 1, 1, square root of 2. And I said that in the ordered pair, where the terminal ray hits the unit circle, is always cosine x, comma, sine x. So the cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over radical 2 which is the same as radical 2 over 2, if you rationalize the denominator. But we're not that specific about it. If you tell me the answer is 1 over square root of 2, that's all right, because the advanced placement graders accept 1 over the square root of 2 as an exact answer. So we can say it's 1 over the square root of 2, comma. Well, the sine of x opposite over hypotenuse is going to be the same answer, 1 over the square root of 2. Now let's talk about 60 degrees or pi over 3. What happens if my angle down here is 60 instead of 30? Well, the side opposite 30 is always 1 in my right triangle, and the side opposite 60 is always the square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So when I go to find the ordered pair where that terminal ray hits the unit circle, the first coordinate is always the cosine of the angle. Well, the cosine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 60, oops, didn't mean square root of 3 over 2. The cosine is actually 1 half. And the sine is the square root of 3 over 2. Now, before I move on, just a reminder that where, because the uh, unit circle is a circle whose radius is 1, this order pair is 1, 0. This is 0, 1. This is negative 1, 0. And this is 0, negative 1. So at 90 degrees, the ordered pair is 0, 1. At 180 degrees, it's negative 1, 0. And at 270 degrees, it's 0, negative 1. As long as you know the ordered pairs of the, th of the major angles in the first quadrant, you'll be able to figure out the ordered pairs in the other three quadrants, just based off their signs. So here was pi over 6, and we said pi over 6 was 1 half comma, the square root of 3 over 2. 45 degrees, we said, was 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. And 60 degrees, we said, was, uh, oh, I'm flipping this already. Ah. Let's go back. Let's see, the cosine is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. Sorry about that. Uh, this was my 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. And this one is my 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. Sorry about that. All right, as long as I know those three, I can find the ordered pair of any terminal ray in any of the rest of the quadrants by knowing the signs of the ordered pairs. Everything in quadrant one 
is positive. But in quadrant 2, the x values are negative while the y values are positive. So if pi over 3 was 1 half square root of 3 over 2, then 2 pi over 3 is going to be negative 1 half square root of 3 over 2. If pi over 4 was 1 over square root of 2, 1 over square root of 2, then 3 pi over 4 is going to be negative 1 over the square root of 2, positive 1 over the square root of 2. It's kind of this neat little trick that happens. And then if pi over 6 was square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, then let's see, that was pi over 6, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi over 6 is this one. Then 5 pi over 6 is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. And again, if you know the special angles in quadrant 1, then you'll know the ordered pairs of the other special angles in the other three quadrants by just knowing what their signs should be. In quadrant 3, everything is negative. In quadrant 4, x is positive and y is negative. So here it goes. At 0, you have 1, 0. At 30 degrees, we had square root of, th oops, square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. At 45 degrees, we had 1 over the square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2. At 60 degrees, we had 1 half, comma, square root of 3 over 2. At 90 degrees, we had 0, 1. Because 120 degrees, or 2 pi over 3, has the same reference angle as this angle, it has the same ordered pair, but the signs are different, so it's negative 1 half square root of 3 over 2. This one's going to be negative 1 over square root of 2, 1 over the square root of 2 negative square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. And then this was negative 1, 0. This angle here also has a 30 degree reference angle. So it's going to have the same ordered pair as any multiple of pi over 6. Well, which makes sense because this is 7 pi over 6. So it must be negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. This one's a multiple of pi over 4, so it's going to be negative 1 over the square root of 2, negative 1 over the square root of 2. This one's a multiple of pi over 3, so it's going to be negative 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. This is 0, negative 1. This one here is a multiple of pi over 6, or sorry, pi over 3. So it's positive 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. This is a multiple of pi over 4. So it's going to have a positive x, but a negative y. And this one is a multiple of pi over 6. So it's going to be positive square root of 3 over 2, but negative 1 half. And that's how the unit circle works. Notice that all the ordered pairs are the same, but they have different signs depending on which quadrant they're in. This is the important stuff to know, and this will need to be memorized because you will get a pop quiz with this exact circle on a sheet of paper, and I will ask you to fill it out. I will ask you to fill out the ordered pairs. I will ask you to fill out the angles in degrees. And I will ask you to fill out the angles in radians.